Yes, I was going to say, somebody would have did that. That would have been the clip. Like, yeah, I don't trust Lecrae with nothing. <laughs> and then you go watch the whole thing. It's like, that ain't what he meant. <laughs> This is, this, this is Surf, Surf Game. Game. And you in the field with the track stars. Let go. You in the field with the track stars, Ryan Righteous, Sean Tanner, DJ Jeremiah. We got Thizzle in the building. What's good? In the building. What up? What up? All right, man. What it do? Man, chilling, man. In the A, chilling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Chilling, How man. you been, man? We didn't talk to you in a minute. Man, I've been good. As, as people say on Twitter, I, I've been quiet. But, you know, yeah. my quiet and other people quiet. How's your Not city? Same thing. St. Louis is it's it's cool right now. Yeah. It's um, you know, we we got a lot of different stuff going on as mm-hmm. far as um I think we got more people being involved mm-hmm. in trying to fix things than mm-hmm. we had before. That's so good. that's always a good forward progress. Yeah. Um we still have uh, a lot of things going on that uh contribute mm-hmm. to division. Okay. You know, it's so much stuff when it comes to St. Louis that I, I think about, you know, like uh, one of my, my big things is education. Right, so right. I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, I think about stuff like that when I think about inner city kids and schools okay. where they don't have the same opportunities as the kids in the county schools, you mm, know. So yeah. it's so much stuff. That's a layer. That that question is so layered. Like we have to do a whole show on like what's going on in St. Louis, yeah, you yeah. know. So, but I think the 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 overall good thing is um, now it's more people getting involved, you know, to to be a part of the solution. And and I've been working with an organization in St. Louis for. Um, a little while now okay. called Slate, which they've been around forever, like mm-hmm. forever, ever, ever. But one of my uh, friends now, one of my good friends, uh, Dr. Alice Prince, okay. she is the new executive director, and she's came in and made uh, a lot of changes towards, you know, creating opportunity for people in the city of St. Louis. So every week uh, we, I always say they, then I say we, but every week we do like a job for okay. her. So where people are getting hired, like, on the spot. Oh, that's what's up. You come in with felons, felonies, you know, whatever the case is. You you, you never had a job before in your life. You can be just coming home from jail, Mm -hmm. doing 10, 15 years. Like, you could be a C, you know, a a CNA, Mm -hmm. LPN, a truck driver. Like, whatever the range is, like, we have jobs for people. And, and like, hundreds and hundreds of people are getting hired. So. That's it's, good. Yeah, that's so that's good. that's a beautiful thing that's that's been happening in the city that I've been seeing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's lately. great. How's how's music been for you, <clears throat> man? I've, I've been um, I've been recording music. Um, yeah, I'm I'm always somewhere recording music. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I've been recording music, but it, it's been it's been a word. I don't want to say word. I don't want to give people no words that they could come back and use on me later. You know what I'm saying? They're like, you are. You said it was word. No. I've been recording music. It's been a different approach. Okay. You know, um, so I know a lot of people, like I was saying before we started or right when we started, a lot of people were like, yo, you know, you've been quiet on Twitter and you, uh, what have you been doing? And, Man, the last year of my life period has been like stupid crazy. Like really? 2017 was like really, 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 really wow. crazy mm. for me. So, um, I put out Levitate. Yeah, yeah. And uh, which I still think today, you know, is some of my my best stuff I've done. Mm-hmm. But I didn't even I didn't even do no videos. I did I shot one video for it, yeah. and uh, I didn't even put it out. Oh, but I have oh, okay. it. But it's actually a dope video, so I'm probably okay. gonna put it out in the next couple of weeks or something. Okay. Okay. But I, I never put I didn't put out any videos for it or any of that. And uh but coming off of the year before I did Against All Odds. Okay. And I didn't do any videos for Against All Odds except for one. Okay. Uh Redemption. Redemption. Okay. And after that I didn't do any videos for it. There were there were a couple reasons. Like I'm I'm real even if my videos are like super hood, I want them to be super dope. Right. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so when I did Redemption, like I was, I, it's one of my favorite songs I've ever done, like period. But the mm-hmm. video, it was kind of like, uh, I love the storyline of it, but I, I wasn't in love with the video. Gotcha. You know, uh, for a couple reasons. So I, I put it out. But then after that, you know, I'm going to be 100. Like, I was in like the worst depression of my life. Really? Oh, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was 
I was in a depression where I was just like, I didn't even want to put videos out. Really? Like, I didn't even want to put out videos. I didn't want to promote the record. I didn't, I barely promoted my book. Mm -hmm. I was just in this place where I just, I didn't really want to do nothing. Was it something that disappointed you? Was it something you, you know, didn't get a reaction? You didn't, you know, you Nah, it? It, it was, I think music in general was changing, but it, it was a bunch of things. Like, uh, so when we, um, when we look at, you know, um, so I would say starting back to Ferguson, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with Mike Brown. Yeah. So when, when the Ferguson situation happened, and I hate calling the situation, but when it when the situation happened in Ferguson, it was kind of like that. And when I started, like really, really finishing my book. Uh -huh. So when I started finishing my book, I had to read read through it myself. Yeah. And so it unearthed a lot of feelings that I still had yeah, and stuff yeah. that I, I I really hadn't dealt with, you know. Yeah. yeah. And so that was kind of the beginning, you know, of it. And then um, when Ferguson happened, like I, for people that have never experienced anything like that, it's it's so draining mm -hmm. that it was just a constant like, you know, this constant tension, this constant. A uh, heightened sense of awareness, this constant like over and over and over, you know, you out in the street and you getting uh, you, you gas canisters going off, you wow. smelling mace yeah, and pepper yeah, spray yeah. and and or you hear shots and you this and you that, and so that stuff. But then on the flip side, it was the reaction for me from the Christian community. Really? So with like like so. So all these years, and I'm 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 gonna use colorful words like white people and black people. <laughs> okay. like, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. gonna be honest. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> or white Christians and black Christians, mm -hmm. you know. So all these years, it was like, here I am. Uh, these churches will bring me in, mm -hmm. like all of these different Christians, white, black, you know. But the, all these white Christians support me. They they love me. They're like, oh, Dizzle. And I've always I've always been uh, inside of. Christian hip hop, I've always been a person that has been fighting for a space, you know, because mm -hmm. my music was always hood mm -hmm. by default, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's just who I am. Yeah. And so, uh, CHH world is not that. Like, it's not hood at all. Like, it, even you, like, they can rap over the most, and I'm saying they, you, know, you ain't got to pinpoint nobody because I ain't talking about nobody because I would have said their name. Mm -hmm. But you could take uh, uh, the average artist in CHH, they can rap over the most trap beat in the world and still not hood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not a hood song. Yeah. Like, it's not nothing that, even though it's, it's over a trap beat, my music has always been hood and my beats have always been trap. You know, so uh, you, you had all this time that I'm sitting up and I'm like, you know, these people trust me with everything. Mm -hmm. You trust me with the the depths and the riches of the gospel. Like you trust me with things that men have examined for two thousand years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll you'll let me come speak this into your child's life without questioning it. Yeah, you know what I mean, instantly. And so, when I come and tell you about what's going on in my city, that's been going on. Way before Ferguson happened, way before this, you're like, no, shut up. Mm -hmm. We don't want to hear that. You're wrong. You're liberal or you're, you know, you're mm -hmm. a Democrat or you. So many people have called me a Democrat where I'm like, <laughs> where do you even get this from? Yeah. Like, I'm not a Democrat. Yeah. Like, I'm not registered to vote in any party. Like, yeah. Like Democrats whack, they do whack stuff. Yep, yeah, you know yep, what I'm saying? Yep. Republicans whack, they do whack stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People are people. Like Republican Party in my brain is not the party of the Christian community. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't like I don't care about people's politics or their political lane. Like I will come at anybody. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you are a libertarian. Like <laughs> if you whack, I'm gonna come at you. <laughs> like so that's just the that's just what it is. But mm -hmm. when when Ferguson happened, it's like, man, I I, I had kids like hitting me up like online you know like one one kid actually told me he said Dizzle like like why don't you just be quiet like you're one of the good blacks we like you mm, what and I'm like come on man you know and then when I when I would when I would retweet some of this stuff or quote it then people were like oh you're wrong you 
you have all these followers and they're gonna, I'm like, no, I'm showing y'all what people are saying to me. Yeah. Over and over and over yeah. again, people are like, I'm about to unfollow you. I'm tired of hearing about this. I'm tired of this, I'm yeah. tired of that, I'm tired yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, you take that stuff and, and I'm dealing with that on the internet. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'm dealing with Ferguson in real life, like yeah. in real time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I'm just dealing with the completeness of like, at that point, just being 100. Like I said, now a lot of people have uh, began to, you know, speak and say stuff in a whole bunch of different ways. But, yeah. you know, back then when that stuff was first happening, even yeah. in the CHH world, uh, like I was one of the few people you, you that was even first saying one. something yeah. about yeah, yeah, stuff were, like yeah. that. I yeah. remember like, first. Like everybody, it was taboo for everybody because people knew, the sad reality is the artists knew that, and I, I y'all know me, I'm going to be 100. Yeah. Like the artists knew that the majority of the money, the shows, everything that they created a livelihood off of was mm -hmm. controlled by white Christians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like if I say something that make them mad or I offend them and they don't want to book me for shows, mm -hmm. I just killed myself, you know? Yeah. So a lot of people wouldn't say nothing mm -hmm. for that reason. Mm -hmm. But I've always been the person, like, I understood why God gave me a voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, right. but I ran into that head first. And then on a local level, you know, the church was barely engaged in it. Like, I'm out in the streets I'm out in the streets arguing with street dudes on why the church isn't there. Right. Mm. And I'm I'm on Twitter with the church arguing at me about why am I there? <laughs> or why am I even saying something? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so wait, so yeah. when did the backlash start? Because I, I don't feel like Ferguson, like um at that time I think it was people weren't tired of it yet. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I felt like it didn't start white Christians didn't start getting tired of it until Trump came around. Did you nah, feel a shift? No, nah, no. Nah. People said a whole lot to me before, before that. Before that. Okay. Yeah. I, like, I, I used to have screenshots and all that of it. Like, people said so much crazy stuff to me. You mm -hmm. know, and then I think once, uh, being 100, once Trump came around, of course. Like, mm -hmm. it got, it, the, it, like the I, I think came. Trump, I think yeah. Trump, I think the whole Trump scenario just gave people the guts to say what they wanted to say. Oh, yeah. yeah but definitely. I'm not, I'm not mad at that. Yeah, I want you to say what yeah, you want to yeah. say because I want I want to identify it. you. We talk about that all yeah, the time. Yeah, I want to identify you. I don't mm -hmm. want you to pretend to be somebody you're not. I mm -hmm. want right. you to say what you really feel. Yeah. So that way I know how to respond accordingly. Yeah. You know, and so even in the midst of all of that, man, like people attacking me, all of that, I stay, I stay so unbiased in my approach, mm -hmm. and I always mm -hmm. do because my ultimate goal, like I'm not a supremacist of any form. Yeah. Exactly. So my ultimate goal is a common ground. But I'm also a realist that understands a common ground can't be met sometimes without making the person that's holding the ground uncomfortable. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So I don't have a problem with protesting. I don't care. <laughs> you can block a highway. You can shut a mall down. Like, you can do whatever you want to as long as it's peaceful. I don't care. Mm -hmm. And obviously our government doesn't care now because they're on the Internet, the Republicans, tweeting like, we stand in support of the Iranian peaceful protesters. Mm -hmm. But... At, the Iranian peaceful protesters against the the things that the citizens feel are wrong again in their country, yeah. Yeah. but when people but do it in your here. country, it's yeah. wrong. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. that's that's the stuff like I don't understand with people. But so did that contri is is that one element of that was one element? That was one element. But then you know, so right after it's one thing that happened that's still like you know it's it's real private, so I can't talk about that. But mm -hmm. it was probably the worst thing out of all of them, okay. just mm -hmm. being one hundred. Yeah. You know, uh, a situation that happened to a, a close, close family member. Okay. You know? and, and that that was devastating. Yeah, you know, yeah. like beyond anything else that I'm going to say, you know. Yeah. And one day when the situation is, you know, uh, I get the word from that person that I, I can talk yeah. about it. You I know, got some of those. It was crushing. Yeah. It was yeah. it, it was immediate family. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But then, so I had Ferguson, I had that situation. Yeah. And then right after that, uh, my pops died. Oh, so, man. so my pops died, yeah. and when my pops died, you know, um, I had me and my father always had a a, a, a rocky, distant relationship. Mm -hmm. And so, before he died, we started getting a lot better. You okay. know, it's, it started getting a lot better. But then, he got sick, and so my kids never had anything with him. They've mm -hmm. never had any form oh, of really? relationship. They've never seen him, um, especially my my younger children. They've never seen him you know, where they can remember. And so when my pops got sick, I was like, yo, I called him. I just, I just had this feeling. I called mm -hmm. him and I'm like, daddy, I'm like, yo, I, I know, you know what I'm saying? I know you're sick. I'm like, and I know you. 
I said, you, you're the type of person, like, you will run to the cut and deal mm-hmm. with your own stuff. I said, let, if, you, if you know, you know, I'm like, let us help you. Mm-hmm. I said, me and my kids, you know, my family, let us help you. I said, you can come down here with us. You know, you could do this, you could do that. And I, uh, and I said, and I, I just begged him, I said, Daddy, if you know that this is bad enough that you're going to die, I said it flat out to him. I said, please mm-hmm. allow my children one opportunity to see wow. you alive. Wow. Jeez. Like, I, I begged him. And, you know, the next call I got was from my stepmom. She like, your daddy real sick. He in the hospital. He, he had surgery. This is after he had surgery. Mm-hmm. He didn't even call me before he went into surgery. And she like, he had surgery, but he, he out now and he doing cool. And she sends me this video of him after surgery. And he, like, laid on the bed. He's slurring. I'm like, he's not cool. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so the next call I get from her, she like, your daddy's in a coma. Oh, you need to, mm-hmm. I was in Miami. I was in Miami about to do a show. Mm-hmm. And um, she like, you need to fly to Detroit because you're his oldest sibling. And you have to come take him off. Oh, and so yeah, now, yeah. So now, support, you've huh? done. You have went and did what I said. You you went and hid. You die, and I and the irony of it all, the person that my whole life, I've I've yearned to have something with you. I've begged to have something with you. Now I have to come make the decision oh, to take you off of life support. Mm. Man, that's, and so that's I, I, I went. I hopped on a plane and I. I I fly up to Detroit. It's late at night. Fly up to Detroit. I go in. I talk to the doctors. They like, there's, you know, there's nothing we can do for him. Like, he's pretty much dead. Like, he's brain dead. He'll never come out of it. He'll just lay here until he dies on his own. And he was like, there's nothing that can be done. They was like, we'll give it a few hours. We'll do these tests. So I stayed like a day. Mm-hmm. They ran a little test, whatever they were going to do. It was like, he's dead. But you have to tell us to turn this off. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so I talked to my, my little sister, my little brother. They're grown, you know, 20s, 30s. And I told him to take them off. And so then, you know, I got a show in Miami mm-hmm. that I have to go back and do. Mm-hmm. So I get on the plane. I go back. I do the show. I'm crying on the stage, all kind of stuff. And uh, we leave from there, you know. And some some months after that, I'm on the highway and I'm riding in my car, you know, and, and I, it's a beautiful day, beautiful. I'm 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 feeling amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm riding on the highway. I'm you know music on, phone ring. It's my mama. So I'm like, ah, oh, mama. I'm so happy. I'm gonna go by her house. I'm cutting up. Mm-hmm. You know, I answer the phone. Mama, what's up? She bawling, crying. So I'm like, what's wrong with my mama? You know, I'm like, mama. You know, somebody caught. Like I'm from the hood. Yeah. Somebody call your phone after twelve o'clock at night. Yeah. You're First thing your brain say is yeah. somebody dead. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying? especially yeah. two, three in the morning. Yeah. And it's yeah. a person you don't talk to. Yeah. Somebody dead. Yeah. Somebody call your phone middle of the day. They they balling like that. I'm like somebody dead. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, dang, mama, what's wrong? What's wrong? She can't even talk. She just balling so hard. My mama like, I just I just got my re- results back from the doctor. I got lupus. Oh. You know what I'm saying? And so. My homegirl had just died from lupus hmm. some months before that. So you yeah. know the deal. So the first thing in my brain was, my mom about to die too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I like I can't front. Like I, I sat there, I talked to her, she she bawling, bawling. Mm-hmm. And uh I get off the phone and I'm bawling now. Like mm-hmm. I'm mad at God. Cause yeah. my mom, she had her issues with drugs my whole life. And so now it's like she gets saved. Mm-hmm. And she get lupus. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, God, you wait until she get saved. Yeah. You know, and she get lupus. And now mm-hmm. she could possibly die. Or this could send her back on the route that she's been yeah. on her whole life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so I'm mad. Not a not a beautiful thing out of that was I like I was crushed. She called me back like an hour later and she like. I'm about to get up and I'm gonna go to work and I'm just gonna trust God with it. Wow. And so that was amazing Man. at that moment, but I still had to deal with yeah. how you felt. This about is gonna, it. you know, and I didn't. Yeah. And so we've always been taught, you know, like, uh, 
especially for me, like I've always been the provider. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I've always been the strong person mm -hmm. in my in my family. Like I, I've been taking care of people since I was 13, 14 years old. You know what I'm saying? Taking care of myself. Yeah. So I've always been one of the go-to people. So I never had time for anything to be wrong with me. Can't nothing be wrong with me. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, you suck it up, you keep it moving. And mm -hmm. that's a man, that's the the the, the masculine mentality. You know, yeah. you suck it up, keep it moving. And um, so I just I'm 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 so on the move, I just I just I, I'm keep I gotta keep going. Mm -hmm. And so I just I just kept going, you know what I'm saying? At the same time, you know, I, I was having, you know, some issues with uh a situation inside my home, mm. but then uh, I think the breaking point for me was uh, in 2016, mm -hmm. I was getting ready to go to South By. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, South By, South By. We ready. Mm -hmm. We car packed. This right before I put out, um, right before I put out uh, Against All Odds. Mm -hmm. We got the car packed, loaded down, promo stuff. Everything like we we ready to go, you know what I'm saying? We, I'm in the car like finna pick my partners up, mm -hmm. Rick Rock and uh, Kendall. We finna we finna shoot down to South by Southwest. I'm driving, get a phone call. Where you at? I'm finna head to Texas, but I ain't left yet. Don't leave. Mm. What's going on? Come to Ferguson at the Mart, where. You know, the store where the Mike Brown thing happened. Mm -hmm. Come to the Ferguson Mart. And I'm like, all right. So I can tell by the way they said there's something wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm going to the Ferguson Mart now, like, man, what's wrong? So now my phone just get to jumping. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? I'm like, what's going on? I'm 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 on my way to Ferguson. All right, come on. Somebody else called, where you at? I'm on my way. You know, everybody calling back to back. Like, I'm like, oh man, something wrong. Yeah. Mm. Then somebody finally call and say, you know, where you at? Come to Ferguson. Somebody just shot Lil One. So Lil One is, his name was Demetrius Bolden. Mm. But Lil One was like, when I was in the street, he was a little kid, you know. And and, and of course, I, I, I gave him the only thing I knew how to give him at that point. Mm -hmm. But when I was in the street, he was a little kid in the hood. We see him around. Situation went right, you know. I'm like, I'm gonna take him under my wing. Like, come on, little bro, let me show you how to. I gave him that name, Lil One. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. let me show you how to do this. Let me show you how to do that. You know, pulled him off the porch, showed him how to take care of himself. Wasn't nobody around, you know, daddy, none of that. Yeah. Mama, yeah, yeah, got two, three, you know. So he he was like my son. He was only a few years younger than me, but he was like my son, like my little brother. Mm -hmm. So his whole life, I done looked out for him. Like even when my life changed, I was still his his role model. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was his person. And uh, some dudes like in the store fighting with my little cousin, and he breaking up the fight. Dude shot him, killed oh, him. Oh man! Yeah, and, and the crusher of it all though, mm -hmm. it was my birthday. <sighs> oh, God. so now I'm gonna remember this the rest of my mm -hmm. life, yeah, forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, I, that that was I think that was the breaking point for me, like where I just I unraveled. Do you? you know what I'm saying it was just like I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't feel like, and when it came to music, I didn't want to put out music or videos because I didn't want to like whenever I put out records, I don't know if people notice. Now a lot of people love what I do, yeah. But whenever I put out records. Like people just come and attack me, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Christians, yeah. yeah, they just come and attack me. Oh, it ain't nothing. It ain't enough. Jesus and this, it ain't enough. This you need to make music like. I remember one with yeah. the cover with a king thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. you need to make America like this, like Chronicles of an Exuster. But when I put out Chronicles of an Exuster, that's what people were saying. Yeah, it ain't enough Jesus. But now people are saying you need to make music like that. Yeah, you know. So I've never had a clear path. I always push through because that's who I am. But I was like, I, I, I wasn't even in the headspace to put out music because I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I don't got time for that right now. I don't got time to be yeah, yeah, yeah. like these people attacking me and, and mm -hmm. arguing and, and all of this and all of that. And, you know, and so mm -hmm. I, that's why I didn't put out music, yeah. you know. And then, I, like, it was obvious. Another thing that was obvious, 
was the more I said stuff about Ferguson or black stuff or police, like the more I saw people withdraw their support from me. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was just like, I didn't really care. Yeah. Wow. It's, so it's this like. This was all since 2006? Mm. Yeah. 16? I'm like 16. 16, yeah. Mm. Jeez. It's like they don't want us to recognize the color of our skin. Yeah. Like you just you just got to be a Christian, put all the other stuff beside you because when you get to heaven, you got this multiracial, you know, picture of what heaven looks like, and they don't they don't want us to recognize that. But you can't recognize something that you've lived all your life, and our stories are different, and our upbringing is different, yeah. and when we bring it all together, you have to you have to understand that. When an issue happens, if we're standing beside each other, I may react one way, you may react another way. We may both be right, but it it has to be it has to be fair to both sides. I, yeah. I tell people this all the time on the, on on um social media. If you don't understand what your brother is going through, then you just need to support him and yeah. just say, hey, you know what? I don't understand it because I didn't grow up that way. I didn't come from that. But I support you and I'm praying for you. And that's yeah. all you need to hear sometimes. Yeah. But when you hear that backlash, when you hear that, you know, you can't say this and you can't say that and you shouldn't be about this and you shouldn't be about that. And it's coming from the place that you feel the most comfort. I mean, yeah, this it's, this this has been happening for a while. Obama, the Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown. Yeah. It was just yeah. like I think there was like a white reaction of, yo, man, I'm tired of all this. I'm tired of talking yeah. about this. Yeah. And I man. think you I think Lecrae's feeling it now. I think everybody's like, there's been like a reaction yeah. to all of us, to everybody. Mm -hmm. the, the crazy thing is, is I always, if you're tired of hearing it, yeah. <laughs> you can imagine how. how yeah, exactly. How you feel. Because yeah. this, this the thing, this the thing that people fail to understand that I always try to get people to understand. This ain't new. Yeah. 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 This isn't new. Yeah. The only thing that's new about this is social media. And camera phones. And camera phones. Yeah. yeah. When I was 16, 17 years old, the police killed one of my friends. Mm -hmm. When I was 18 years old, the police shot one of my friends in the back while he was running away mm -hmm. and paralyzed him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like this this is this is like these issues like I when I was a young buck, 14, you know, 15 years old, the police would take dudes from the neighborhood that we beefing with and bring them to our neighborhood yeah. and drop them off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make yeah. them get out the car. Mm -hmm. And they'll do dudes like that from our neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. So the relationship between police and urban community has always it's been bad. jacked up. Yeah. It's People bad. that's that's something we need to get over. Like, you know, like it's always been bad. So who else better to tell you this my issue with the Christian community was who else better to listen to than the person that you trust? Yeah. If you trust me that Jesus has done the work in me that he's done enough to sit in front of your children and talk to them about the gospel, enough to them to follow my life on social media, enough to see everything that I'm doing. Yeah. But now when I tell you, no, this has always been a problem. Why don't you trust me no more? Mm -hmm. The it's only reason you can't trust me now is because it affects your comfort. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. most people, when you left racism and I'm just going to be 100. When most people, when, when Martin Luther King just got killed 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So think about that. I always ask people this. When you go back and look at, go back and look at the Selma pictures from 50 years ago. That's 50 years. Where, where's the little girl that, that was 10 years old? Mm. That's in the picture throwing rocks at black people. Where's yeah. she at? She's still still, still she, raised, she raised children. Yeah. She probably got grandchildren. Yeah. Where, where are all the Ku Klux Klan hoodies? What happened to them? Yeah. Where they at? Do you know how many people have probably been rambling through their people's basement, going through stuff and finding clan hoodies? Never mm -hmm. knew they were involved in that. Mm -hmm. But you've learned from them unconsciously mm -hmm. a subtile version of racism. Mm -hmm. They've coached you through your whole life on how to treat and deal with black people. But we can go way past all of that because Christians, we, we always pretend to be smart. Mm -hmm. Like we are smart. We got this understanding, this godly wisdom and understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at some reality. Let's just break it down. All right. Look at American history. Look at American history. Mm -hmm. Any person with common sense and wisdom and two eyes cannot look at American history and sit back and say that this world that we live in in America was created by a group of people not everybody. Yeah. By a group of people that thought black people were less than human. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Like we can go back as far as we want to in American history and see that black people have been oppressed because of the color of their skin, not because of their action, not because of things they've done. This is way before stealing, carjacking, gang banging, right. all of that. Yeah. This and we want to if we want to realistically talk about where all of that stuff was learned mm -hmm. and taught to the black community. Like we didn't have no money to shoot no gangster movies. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Like we ain't shoot uh, all of these gangster movies in the early days. Yeah, we didn't do none of that. Like we didn't fly no drugs into the hood. Yeah, like we didn't do none of that stuff. So the 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 the, the violence and the attitude and the things that we've learned, we've learned that stuff from American culture. Yeah, but no anybody with common sense, it's like why can't you just look and say, you know what? You're right. I told a group of people in a church in Nashville, all white. I was one of probably three black people in there when all this stuff first started happening. I said, one thing I don't want y'all to do is feel guilty mm. about this. Because it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You had nothing to do with this. Mm. Don't feel guilty about what that happened in the past. And I think a lot of times that's where people, that's what make them uncomfortable. Because they think when you speak out on stuff like that, you're instantly looking at them and saying, oh, you white devil. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You wrong. No. Yeah. I have white friends that I love. Yeah. Love them to death. They're, I love their children. I love them. I love them way past the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be an idiot and say that I'm colorblind because yeah. I'm not. You know why? Because God didn't make me like that. Yeah. He made me to celebrate diversity, culture, to see beauty in different things. Mm -hmm. But I, my white friends, I love them. But yeah. I got white friends that are, that that also truly understand. Man, I was in a car in Seattle. And this is why I tell people, I, I can tell you from experience. We, I was in a car in Seattle with my friend. You know, it's, it's two white people in the front. Neither one of them have on a seatbelt, mm -hmm. right? A dude and a girl. Then it's another white dude on the middle. We in an 18 pa uh, 12 passenger van. Another white dude in the middle seat. And then you got a black dude. And then you got another white dude. And you got an Asian dude and me, right? And, and I think Javon was with us. Probably another. So it's like, it's like half and half, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The two drivers, neither one of them have on the seatbelt, but they both white. The police officer literally came to the van, bro. Looked past them, looked in the back and said, give me y'all IDs. And the white dude starts reaching for his. He say, no, not you, them, 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 and them. <laughs> what? Take the IDs from us. Yeah. Nobody in the van had on seatbelts. The, the driver and the passenger didn't have on seatbelts. He took all of our IDs and driver's license, the, the three black dudes and the Asian dude, and wrote all of us tickets. And we were I was on the last row in <laughs> which, the back. Which is legal, right? He wrote me. No, it's, it's illegal in Washington to oh, not okay. have seatbelts, especially in the passenger vans, because they've had too many cases of people like flipping and them dying. Okay. I'm on the back row. I get a ticket for no seatbelt. My boy is driving. With no seatbelt on, and he don't get no how, ticket. How did he react to that? Because usually that makes it's like eye opening. He moment. was like, "Yo, that did not just happen." Yeah. And I'm like, "Yes, it did." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, and the Asian now? the you Asian dude was ready to turn up. Oh yeah, of course. He was like, he like, no. I'm like, bro, like we in the, we we out in the desert. Right. Yeah. I'm like, bro. It's I'm like, chill out, bro. Like it's good. Get your ticket. Refute it, whatever. But even when, <laughs> like, even like, y'all want to be one hundred. Like, let's talk about Christian music. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Christian music. One of the biggest discouraging things for me in doing CHH has been I knew I wouldn't have as many opportunities for two reasons. One, I'm hood, mm -hmm. flat out. You cannot throw me on main stage at Creation Fest. It's yeah, not happening. Yeah, you can yeah, give yeah. me a whole band. <laughs> you can give me all the lights you want. You can give me dancers. Yeah. You can do whatever you want to do. It's not going to fly. Like, yeah. once I start rapping, it's going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to fly. So, I'm just too hood. Like, yeah. I look like I still go places. People look at me all the time. Like, some dudes was in jail. I know a dude just got out of jail. He said, man, I was in jail arguing with these dudes because they kept telling me you still sell dope. <laughs> just from watching my videos. You know what I mean? So I, I get it. I get that part. I'm cool with that. That's yeah. something I'm cool with yeah. because I'm unapologetically me. Yeah. I've yeah. never tried to switch up who I was to try to fit in and make money. 
You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because yeah. at the end of the day, that's cats is getting checks. You know what I'm saying? Like, never try to do that. Never, right? But the other thing was, is I make black music. And that's so you put a quotation around it, mm-hmm. but I make hood music. Mm-hmm. If I was black and made music that sounded CCM, I would be cool. Mm-hmm. Y'all want me to tell you how I know this? Yeah. I'll give you two examples. So I'm in um, Orlando, Florida, right? Yep. You know they had this little station down there. Yep. Uh, 95.5. 95.5, five, mm-hmm. right? People would always hit me up on Twitter different places and say, man, I never heard your music on this station. Mm-hmm. they like, why not? Like, it's one of your biggest places. So they like, we never heard it. So I'm talking about over and over again, people constantly hit me up, we never heard your music, never. So I go down to Orlando, Florida, and you know, the dude that was running it, Tim, yeah. I go down there and I do a show it was with, uh, who was, I know Benji was on the show, mm-hmm. but it was a, a reach artist. I want to say it was KB. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was KB, I think. Long story short, we do the show. I come out and I do King Without a Crown, mm-hmm. right? When I do King Without a Crown, I do the acapella first and the whole room singing it. Mm-hmm. Riding around with the top laid back, let it knock. I'm, I'd have been in Orlando before. I, yeah. I like, yeah. Like, granted, I, I knew that was going to happen. You know what I mean? In certain places I go to. But Tim was there and he saw it and he was like, Yo, the, the crowd, they, they, they responded so well. He was like, that, what's that new song you did? I said, it's not new. It's King Without a Crown, and I put it out last year. I sent it to you when I put it out, right? This true story. I'm like, I sent it to you when I put it out. And y'all know, y'all see I don't care. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, I've been doing this for years. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I done got calls from artists like, why did you say that? <laughs> they gonna blackball you. I'm like, bro, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm talking to I, I'm talking to dude. And I'm like, I sent you the song. Mm-hmm. He said, You know what? You're right. And so I, I leave and I go and I'm, I listen. I listen to the radio station down there all day long, mm-hmm. all day in the car. I ain't even gonna front to y'all. I do my my radio do not be on Joy FM <laughs> and the fish. I yeah. don't I don't ride around listening. <laughs> like I don't ride around listening to CCM radio all day. I yeah, don't yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Ain't my thing. I I sit in the car and listen to nothing. <laughs> I'm being honest because a lot of it sounds just alike. Oh, it's the same yeah. thing over and over and over I'm again. The same way. I heard a few of the songs. I'm straight. Like yeah. we always say that about mainstream radio. Yeah. They play the same songs over and over and over again. Christian radio do too. It's yeah, the same yeah, yeah, thing yeah. over and over. So Absolutely. I don't ride around listening to Christian radio all day. I'm, I listen to that station from the time I got off the plane to the time I left. And I'm listening because people steady saying, like, why don't they play you? We love you down here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm listening, and I start hearing songs that sound like my songs. <laughs> like, where I heard, like, a little thizzle, little knockoff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm like, dang, like, this mug sound like me. You know? And then... I heard uh, uh, this true story. NF record came on. Mm-hmm. Now, NF, this is my dog, so don't nobody read nothing crazy into this <laughs> and make me have to go off on y'all on the internet, right? <laughs> NF, my dog. Like, this is my dog. Mm-hmm. So I heard the NF record come on, and the NF record is dark. Like, most of the NF, yeah. NF yeah, records yeah, are yeah, emo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they emo. Like, yeah. I, like, when I, like, I love emo. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Joe Budden emo. Like yeah, I yeah. love Move emo, yeah. mood music. Like, mm-hmm. like Joe Budden and NF. When I listen to their records, I gotta take them in in doses. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I gotta go like it'll six change, songs. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go like six songs. Then I gotta listen to something else to bring me back up. <laughs> then I gotta go like five more songs. But I love it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm listening to the NF record like on the thing, and I'm like, this mug is straight dark. Yeah. They playing it though. Yeah. I heard it three, four times. Yeah. Right. Yep. So boom, I called dude on the phone. I say, man, this this Christian radio. So I mm-hmm. called dude on the phone. I say, I say, man, I wanted to rap with you about something. You know, people kept asking me why y'all don't ever play my music. I say, I just, I just want to hear it from you. I'm like, I, I I listened to the station. I heard these different records. I saw you know this type of stuff and this and this little song. It sounded like mm-hmm. something I would do and da 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 da. And, and so I'm talking to him and and uh. We get all the way into the conversation, and I said, even with the king without a crown, I said, you saw everybody singing it, and he said, well, this one, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you one of the things that happens. Mm. 
I said, all right, let me know. He said, we have a board of people that review records, mm -hmm. right, before they get played. So I'm like, okay, that, that ain't no problem. The mainstream radio do that. Yeah. But the main, mainstream <laughs> radio, they go to the demographic that they're trying to reach. Yeah. 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 And play records for the demographic that they're trying to reach. Yeah. Right. Right. We've right. Been in those rooms. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm like, what y'all panel look like? <laughs> and so <laughs> y'all y'all be laughing at me like I'm cracking jokes. <laughs> I'm serious. So I'm like, what y'all panel look like, right? I said, let me guess, no lie. I said, is it a group? And I'm using my colorful words. Don't y'all call me no racist. <laughs> I said, is it a group of white people over 40 years old? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. He said, except for one, and uh, he's a black dude, he said, but I think he's close to 50, 50 something. Mm -hmm. Bruh, you take my music and play it for a group of 40 to 50 year old white people, mothers. Yeah. yeah. And soccer moms, and, soccer moms yeah. and, and a black dude that's 60. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I understand now. Now I understand. But we went further into the conversation. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what did they say? He said, they said your music sounds too ghetto. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yep. My music sounds ghetto, mm -hmm. right? Then I said, well, who are y'all trying to reach? What is, what is your... You know, who y'all trying to reach with the station? Well, we're trying to compete with the mainstream station that plays R&B and hip-hop. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. But you don't want to play my music? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. If these the people if these the people you're trying to reach, I'm one of your best options. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, flat out. Yeah, yeah. But you're trying to reach a group of people that's 18 to 34, that's living in the hood, or urban communities, but you're allowing five people that aren't even engaged in that life to be the people to pick what's going on. So we went a little further. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. I said, well, I, I said, I want to ask you something. I said, and I'm going to be blunt with you. And I told him the same thing. I prefaced it. I said, NF is my dog. Before I say this, I said, don't think I'm, I'm bringing him up for no other reason. I said, but I'm using it for a reference. Yeah. I said, well, I heard this NF song on the station, I said, and his music is just as dark as mine, or darker. Mm -hmm. I said, why why wasn't that, why is that cool? And dude flat out told me to my face. He said, Thizzle, let's be honest. We trying to reach white people. <laughs> <laughs> flat out. He said, we're trying to reach white people. Hey, we can laugh about it now. I'm being 100. It's funny now. But do y'all know what happened? I'm, I'm, be, I'm That's y'all know. I don't care what people think about me. I'm telling y'all. Do y'all know what I did when I got off that phone? What'd you do? Bruh, I was uh, in the middle of talking to Chris Chicago and him about doing some uh, management and stuff for me. Mm -hmm. So you know Chris do radio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, I got on the phone and I called Chris Chicago. It was, this was probably early in the day. I called Chris Chicago, bro, and I cried. Mm. I bawled crying. I'm mm. I started telling him a story, and I started bawling. I said, bro, I'm out here laying my life down. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Laying my life down. Yeah. I done turned down several opportunities that I could have taken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm out here laying my life down. Mm -hmm. And the people that's supposed to support me aren't supporting me because I'm black. Yeah. Inside of Christian music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They backwards. crush me. That's backwards. Yeah. It's like so I, backwards. and this is in the midst of all of this other stuff, the the, the Ferguson. I yeah. cried like I bawled crying. I'm mm -hmm. bawling to Chris on the phone. He like, bro, well, if we work together, I'll be the person. I'm, I'll fight for you. You know, you said all this stuff. But that wasn't the first time. Mm -hmm. When I put out, and this is before Ferguson. When I put out Free From The Trap, I had a song on there uh, called In The Morning. Mm -hmm. I remember that. The mm -hmm. song professionally produced. Instrumentation, like, amazing song. Dope singer. Like, dope writing. And the, and the verses, I'm talking to kids about cutting 
and I'm talking to them about wanting to commit suicide and trusting Jesus and not ending their life. I'm like, this is a dope record. Let's. It's a Christian record. It's, it got all the feels mm -hmm. of a Christian record. Let's give it to Christian radio. And so I go and try to hire a Christian radio promoter. I'm mm -hmm. going to pay him. Like, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. You pay the promoter. He makes all the phone calls. He sends it to people. I give him the record and send it to him. And he said his exact words. He hit me back. He said, this is an amazing song. I said, right on, bro. Yeah. He said, but it ain't going to work. Yeah. I said, why is it going to work if it's an amazing song? He said, because your singer sounds black. Mm. Mm. True story. You're giving away, you're giving away too many so, uh, behind the scenes <clears throat> details here. So we've been on the same end of that phone call, that conversation yeah. with the same people. Yeah. And we've been told, track stars, y'all are too dark. I mean, we wait, wait, we we changed our logo because that they, we were told it looks too, it's too ghetto. It's too ghetto. Yeah, that's too hood. That's gonna scare white people away. That's gonna scare investors off. You got to yeah. change it. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go to that. Yeah. When we sent that to them, they were like, "Oh, you got it, you got it." And it's so frustrating to be. I mean, people love us. People people talk about what we do. We have black fans, white fans, yeah. Asian fans, all over. Hispanic fans, it doesn't matter. But the most frustrating thing is when I send our stuff off and I'm talking to these program directors, and I've emailed out to hundreds of people mm -hmm. talking about our show. We've been on 147 stations at one time. Yeah. And when I email them, when, that, when I get it back, they're like, nah, we don't have a slot for you. No, we can't do this. No, we can't do that. Because you all talk about way too much. You all go this and go that. And it was like... And I really want to ask them, like, have you listened to our show? Have you found other authentic black men, Christians, talking about what we talk about and being true to the lifestyle? See, this is the problem. Let me tell you the problem. We, we always want to make it spiritual. Like, a lot of it is spiritual. Yeah. You know? A lot of, like, a lot of it is spiritual. Like, it's the devil. Yeah. Like, a lot of it is spiritual. Like, like my pastor told me this a, a while back about a book that I keep saying I'm going to read. I just downloaded the audio book. Mm -hmm. Screw tape letters from C.S. Oh, Lewis. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Right? okay. My yeah. pastor was like, I would try. He, he said, God is going to do his work regardless. Yeah. And you know that. Yeah. He said, but if I was the devil, I would use everything I could to stop a person like you. Mm -hmm. He said, because you're not going to sugarcoat nothing with people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to go talk to people nobody want to talk to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to go do, like, y'all see that? I, like, when I get when I get on mainstream TV, I'm the same person. Mm hmm like, I'm the same person mm -hmm. every, everywhere I go. My mm -hmm. speech don't change. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a flawed human being. I might do some dumb stuff every now and then. Mm -hmm. But my speech, like, my convictions are, are rooted in a belief system that I'm not afraid to talk about. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so we got to acknowledge that it's spiritual. But at the same time, we also have to acknowledge that just like everything else like most things in this world, mm -hmm. it's controlled by the majority, and the majority has to, happens to be white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if if you're if you are talking about something that's contrary, like if if my radio station, the majority, so uh, like I'm gonna make up a name because I don't want none of them to think I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. it. So <laughs> let's say the Root FM. It's, it's it plays contemporary uh, Christian music all day long. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the majority of the fan base are, they are uh, suburban parents, uh, 30s up. Mm -hmm. And these are, most of these stations are user uh, or listener supported. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people are saying, they're, they're, they're getting support from the listeners. Hey, you love our station. You love what we bring to you in your car. Um, partner with us and donate $30 a month. So a lot of these stations are listener supported. So, yeah. so. If 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 my majority base, what keeps the ship moving? What 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 keeps it going? Who's bringing the dollars in? If it's a majority of people that you're gonna upset with your talk and your yeah, rhetoric, yeah, yeah, yeah. you will never have a spot. Yeah, you tell the truth. Yeah, and the sad thing is, is that's even in Christianity. Yeah. It's not just with music; it's with preaching. Like, mm -hmm. how many times have you looked at a conference? flyer or a poster and how many black dudes you see on there yeah it's 20 white dudes you mean to tell me that y'all don't have no solid black 
Christian dudes around you are Asian or Hispanic. No solid dudes around you of another ethnic background that can speak life into people through the gospel. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me that everybody around you that you have to choose from, they're all white? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that it's everywhere. It's not just with music, it's mm -hmm. Christianity, period. And that's the stuff for me, honestly, I'm gonna be honest. Like I sat back and I was like, bro, I don't do this. Mm. This ain't my thing. So me going into the space that I was in emotionally yeah. and, and, and and the depression, it caused me to evaluate life. Like, what is it that I'm here to do? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, who is it that I'm here to reach? Like, am I wasting my time? Because yeah. yeah. I'm constantly fighting against the grain of a system that don't want nothing to do with me. Like, y'all constantly tell me every chance you get, like, I don't want nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, we not going to be foolish. Yeah. There's a there's thousands of people that support me and a majority of them are white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they rock with me hard because they love what I authentically do. Yeah, yeah. Even when you say stuff like this. Yeah, even when I say this yeah. stuff, they're yeah. gonna be like, Yeah, this you know what I'm saying? Tell them, tell them. Yeah. 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 They're gonna be like, Yeah, let's get it. Mm -hmm. But the stuff that bro, like when you look around, bro, even in my own city, let's man, I'm, I'm, I, I came here to talk about some real stuff. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So even in my own city, bro, when the Ferguson stuff happened, dog, like I was like one of the only dudes, if not only Christian dude, like in our circle, of young, old, or whatever, I'm out there every day. We saw you, we saw you on Every day. I'm, I pulled a form together. I put a form together last minute, bro, three days. Everybody like, that's too short of a notice. Three days, bro, I got 900 some plus people in there from the street, from the church, everywhere. Coming to talk about solutions. I do a benefit concert. We pack that mug out to where we got 900 people that can't get in. Mm. I'm steady bringing ideas to these older white men. Like, let's have a panel. Let's do this. Let's bring these people. I get them names. Like, let's bring these people. Let's do this. And he tell me, oh, Thizzle, you know, I don't I don't think that's a, um, a good idea for us to, you know, uh, do this in front of people. And, you know, we need to have these talks in private. Oh, <laughs> bro, no, but this is the crusher. <laughs> Two weeks later, he's putting on the panel and he's invited half of the people I told him, but he didn't invite me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There is no seat. I'm like, when there's no seat at the table, I take the route that David took. Like, God prepares the table in the presence of my enemies. But well, everything you're saying is why we exist. I yeah. mean, I, I, what? 12 years now ago, I see I saw some of this where I, I don't want to depend on somebody else to give me an opportunity. Yeah. Let's make the opportunity. And it takes a long it's taking a long time. Yeah. That's yeah. why I exist. Yeah. That was my yeah. route. Exactly. When so, I first when I first started, when I first started doing what I was doing, I'm gonna be 100. Yeah. Everybody said it wouldn't work. Really? Oh, my yeah. dogs. Mm. <clears throat> my dogs. Mm. It's too dark. You gotta make these kind of songs. It's it's this, it's that. Like, my dogs, like, mm -hmm. the cats that I, I ride or die with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It ain't going to work because they saw the whole structure. And you know what I did? I sat back and I said, God, you've given me a group of people to reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to do that. But what all of this has done for me, too, in the midst of that, is it's recalibrated that thought. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Bro, when I go into, like, say, for instance, like, records like It's All Good. Mm -hmm. So I drop, I drop. It's all good. I play it for ev everybody. I play it for A and R. Anybody, they like, bro. This is a hit record. Mm -hmm. I played it for Street Symphony. Street say, bro, it sounds like you spent like ten grand doing this record. Yeah, he's tough. He say it sound. He literally said it sounds like I A and R. This. He say this record is cold. Mm -hmm. Like he like it's cold. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, like flat out, it's a dope record. Mm -hmm. Christian community didn't jump on it. I put the video out. They hitting me up like, the girl in the video, like, you know, you can see her, like, Chess. her skin. And so I sent it to my pastor. I say, look at this. My pastor, he's conservative, hood, educated, all of that in one. <laughs> but he do not play with the gospel. Yeah. So I say, I say, look at this and tell me if it's, if it's wrong. I said, tell me what you see that's wrong. He looked at it a few times. He called me back. He said, I don't see nothing. What you talking about? I said, well, so a lot of people been hitting me up saying that they don't want to share the video because you can see the girl uh, chess. Mm. And so he went 
and looked at it again. He said, bro, the only way you're going to see that girl's chest if you pause it and zoom and in. And you want to see it. You nah. want to see it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if you want to see it, there's nothing I can stop you from seeing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't, you, she don't even need to have no skin open. Yeah. You're going to pause it and look through her shirt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so I couldn't help that. But that, that same record, when I go, I went to the radio station and let them hear it. They like, man, it's hard. They playing it. The Lord Help Me record. Like, the DJs heard a record. They play the record on their own on the radio, but the Christian community they just that they just threw it away. I go to I went to I went to a string of high schools and juvenile centers, bro. Like over some months, and every time I walk into these high schools and juvenile centers, I do the records that never have life heard there, and they oh, go yeah. nuts. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, 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 nuts. Yeah, and so this stuff has been recalibrating me. Like, dang. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm putting my energy mm -hmm. into I'm putting it in the right place, but I'm 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 not putting enough energy here. Mm -hmm. Cause at one point, I'm gonna be honest, it had me at the point where I was like, I don't wanna do no more. Like I was I'm not gonna be the dude that say don't call me a Christian rapper and I still start doing and I keep doing church events. Mm -hmm. Right. If I say don't call me a Christian rapper, i I'm not rapping at a church ever again in my life. Mm -hmm. Like I don't care how much they paying me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be like, no. You know what I'm saying? So at one point I was finna say, I'm, I'm done with it completely. Like, and I just do what I'm gonna do. Cause y'all done threw me away anyway, you know what I'm yeah. saying? For the most part. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I'm not, I'm not losing nothing. I don't mm -hmm. have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. And but then I went out on the road with Bizzle. Mm -hmm. And we a majority of what we did were churches and, and Christians. And I'm seeing the little kids and I'm seeing the parents coming up like, yo, my kids love your music. Like, da da da. Mm -hmm. It's helping them, you know, this, that, and the other. And and so I'm like, okay, let me think through this some more. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I'm still not finna make music where I need to address some real issues mm -hmm. and have to sit up and say, well, I can't. I'm save not finna this. try to save the. Like, I'm gonna miss the opportunity to try to pull these thousand people out of their situation because I want to be all the way censored for your eight-year-old child. Right, yeah. Like, you could play somebody else for him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In all respect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't make kid music. Right. Yeah. But in Christian in Christianity, hip-hop in general is considered to be a kid thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you go to, you know, hip-hop concerts in the world, it's people in their 30, 40 years old. Of course, yeah. Jamming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's the, like, they, they, it's all ages of people. Yeah. So I, I'm like, I ain't gonna just throw the whole baby away. Cause yeah. there's still people that because you can still reach people there. there that I love and mm -hmm. reach and want to reach there. And I want, I, I love making records like Be King. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love making records like Take My Life. Yeah. I love expressing the heart of my conviction through my music. Yeah. But at the same time, I got records that I love that I've never put out because I just didn't want the headache. Mm. You know, you're going to get that backlash. Yeah. So, so, so the, yeah. it seems like the real problem is there's a gatekeeper bottleneck to the larger audience. Of and then they're keeping you out. Of course. So what are we doing about It ain't about just that? keeping me out. They keep yeah. anything out that doesn't sound like what they want. Yeah, and we've talked to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, no, you're yeah. saying yeah. Oh, no. We, yeah. we know. No, you that's said what I'm saying. verbatim. I, yeah. Like, yeah, that's not Let happening. me tell you what this radio station told us. They said, right now, y'all are hot. They were saying, you guys are probably supposed to be the next big thing that, that 1834 genre is supposed to be the new gospel. Yeah. But until the baby boomers die out, until they turn off the radio, we can't put you on because the majority of our audience is not trying to hear hip hop. And, and, and they'll call the station and, and, they're, like, and, turn and, and they're the ones that are supporting it. Yeah. Yeah. See, but this is this is the thing that I've always tried to preach for years to dudes, but they wouldn't listen to me. We gotta create our own stuff. We, yeah. That's why y'all exist. That's yeah. why I exist. Like I've been successful at what I do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've been successful at what I and do. And you need to show people how but, to. Yeah, and that's what we need. Yeah. We need to show other people how to do it. But when something, like, I'm going to tell y'all 100, the reason I came here today was because I'm like, I know I got a lot to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I got a lot to say that I want to get off my chest. I said, and at the same time, I wanted to do it with y'all because... I want to see what y'all do flourish. Yeah, I've I'll been watching. I've been wa I, like I've been watching y'all show <laughs> since we did our last interview. Wow. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That, like I, I see the group of people that it reach. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I told y'all I remember to y'all face. Yeah, I yeah. ain't like the thizzle yeah, verse I remember. person thing yeah. at first. But then my cousin that's hood came to me and was like, yo, I saw you on the internet. It was these dudes. It was like a thizzle verse this person. And I da da da. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, it works. Yeah. It works. Yeah. yeah. And y'all doing it in a way that ain't as corny as people has did it in the yeah. past. Yeah. Just yeah, being yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, I want to see what y'all do continue to flourish man, we because it man. creates it creates a space for people that don't have a space. Yeah. I was just riding with Swift, and uh, Swift was like, man, I got this new record that I put out. I want you to hear it. And so I'm listening to the record, and I'm in the car like, yo, this look hard. <laughs> like, I'm like I'm serious. I'm zoned out. So yeah. he like, I ain't even know it was on Apple Music. This just happened yesterday. Yeah. So he like, I ain't even know it was on Apple Music. I'm like, how is it on Apple Music? It's popped up there. Like I'm, this is what we say. I'm like, how we get on Apple Music? Oh, my people, I did a distribution little thing. I said, oh, you signed a deal? He said, no, nah, I did this thing with Track Stars. He like where they put the record, and I'm sitting there like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it man. makes sense. Yeah. yeah, but it's gonna like, dudes, dudes are so scared to, <clears throat> dudes are scared to lose that money. Yeah. 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 So you can't say stuff like I'm saying right yeah. now. And yeah. I and I've been saying it the whole time. So it's been a, it's been a, it's been a. A, a, a gathering of all things for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I know some people probably can't stay in my guts. <laughs> like, I'm just being honest. Because they know I'm going to say it. Because yeah. first of all, it's foul. Yeah. Like, yeah, if you're yeah, claiming yeah, yeah. to be a Christian and you running the Christian radio station and you say you play hip-hop music, like, I told the dude, I said, dog, this don't even make sense in any world of music. How can you not play one of the top ten dopest artists in your space? Yeah. 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 That don't even make sense in yeah. no world. Yeah. People would look at them stupid. Like, yeah. who y'all playing? Mm-hmm. Y'all don't play Tadashi. Y'all don't play uh, Dre Murray. Like, y'all don't play uh, none of these dudes that's making records that that fit in to the people that you're trying to reach, and they're the biggest artists in your space. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't. But you claim to play Christian hip-hop. Yeah, no. How? No. <laughs> that don't even make sense. That If you go into a record... If you go into a music industry and, and, and you tell somebody that, they're going to look at them like they stupid. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be like, y'all, y'all, y'all yeah. killing y'all own self. Yeah. Like they've killed, they're killing their own opportunity to go change the world. Mm-hmm. You saying you want to change the world? You got all of these watts and all of this reaching power where you can reach people, all different kind of people. Why wouldn't you play it? You know, but you know what's the saddest part? Is we've gotten that from those stations, but we also get it from the gospel stations. Oh, of man. course, that's, that's what hurts. Yeah, that's what hurts. Of you course. get it from both sides. And the gospel mm-hmm. stations, you gotta understand this. And I, I told y'all, I don't, I don't take no sides. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no favoritism <laughs> on my end. The gospel stations, you gotta understand this. In the black, they go one of my colorful words. Yeah. yeah. In the black gospel world, hip hop is still demonized. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's demonized. It's still don't. It's 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 of the devil. Mm-hmm. But your kids. Listening to Twenty One Savage, yeah. Mm-hmm. Your yeah. kids listening to Lil Uzi Vert. Your kids mm-hmm. listening to Two Chains. Yeah. Your kids listen to the Migos. Mm-hmm. But instead of you giving them something else that they can listen to that's dope, you minimize what we do and say it's the devil one. Mm-hmm. But then they minimize it down to children's music. Mm-hmm. So they'll bring you in. They'll bring in an artist in a black church, and you you. Like you sitting up rapping two, and, and four, to kids six. that's two, three years old, yeah. and they mm-hmm. don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. ain't even considered something vi- like valuable towards reaching the community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the dudes that's outside of your door that's selling dope on the front. That I, I personally think overall the church, the church has never understand understood what to do with uh, hip hop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I think the ability to get shows in Christian hip hop without uh, a certain amount of effort of things also crippled it. Yeah, like it crippled it because it, once you start doing those shows and people start cutting you checks and you realize like like whatever industry you're in, you're gonna you're you're gonna cater to your market. Yeah. So the more and more the market became widely suburban, the Christian audience continued to cater to that, the mm-hmm. CHH world. Because if I don't cater to that, I'm not going to get on these big shows. Mm-hmm. But in return, what it did is it took away some of the authenticity 
that once made people love it that didn't have nothing to do with the church. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so then you turn around, and, and in the black gospel world, in the black church, they've never really wanted nothing to do with it anyway. They've never yeah. really wanted nothing to do with us. I can't, I can't, like, I walk up into the average, and some of them have. Shout out to the people that did. They, some have. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'd have been to some dope ones that have. <laughs> but the majority of the black gospel church world, they still demonize it or they see it as something that's not valuable. If if we walk into that church looking the way that we look, like it's gonna be a problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they they still consider the way you dress is is reflecting on your inside. But Jesus said, Y'all so whitewashed cups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like y'all yeah. wash the inside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to y'all wash the outside. I'm trying to change the inside. Yeah. So I don't think the church really never knew what to do with Christian hip hop. Yeah, you know, one of my things is that I want to see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk. I want to talk about a couple uh, positives out of this, all mm -hmm. of the negatives. So one of the things that I want to see, especially with the, you know, when I when I like when I walked into Ferguson and uh and started writing my book and started dealing with a lot of the depression that I was dealing with, it made me see something. One of my friends, Eric, died too. DJ Eric, he was my DJ for like six, seven years. He's wow, a Christian, mm -hmm. so he died too, like right around that same time. Mm -hmm. But when Eric died, it, it, that's that. I think that was the thing that made me realize I was how messed up I was. Mm -hmm. Cause here's a dude I didn't travel the world with, mm -hmm. you know, for six, seven years straight. Mm -hmm. I know his kids. I know his wife. He know my uh, family. He know my like all of my friends. He he know all of this. You know what I'm saying? Everything going on. He know and and we've been in towns together where it's me and him, and it's it's five thousand people in the town, and everything closed at seven o'clock, and we up in there kicking it. You know what I'm saying? In the town, laughing, cracking jokes. Me and him walking to a store, the only thing open in the town. Like this, is my dog. Mm -hmm. He died randomly, heart attack, going to the gym to work out, oh, pass man. out, right? Jeez. So I'm in, in my head. I'm sitting. I'm sitting in this funeral home going service, and I'm sitting there, and I literally I'm sitting there with my arms crossed like this, <laughs> and I, I said to myself, I said, "Bruh, I'm messed up." I said, "I should be in her right now, balling," mm. but I've seen so many people die yeah. in my life that I love <clears throat> that death it doesn't even phase me no more. Wow. Mm. That's one of my strengths and my weaknesses. I'm a survivor. Like, the mm -hmm. stuff I done been through before, the stuff I just... This is all stuff I'm talking about that started happening in 2012. Wow. All the mm -hmm. stuff I done been through in my life before that, like, make people jump off of buildings. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, all the stuff I've been through in the past four years, dudes don't... They don't bounce back from. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that that's my strength and my weakness. I'm a survivor by nature. God, he bred me like that. So why do you think he broke you? Because it seemed like he almost but, said, you, you, I need to sit you all the way down. Okay. I need to break you I'm all gonna, the way I'm down. I'm going to tell you why. He mm -hmm. said, I want to break you down. I'm going to tell you why. Because when I went into Ferguson, I was looking around at people's faces. And I was like, why did this just do them so bad? Like, it it like, it like it broke people. It destroyed yeah. them. Yeah. I'm like, why did this just, why did this incident hurt people so bad? And I was sitting there and I'm looking at, and the whole time I'm out there, I'm praying. I'm, I'm you know, I'm talking to God. I'm like. And I'm like, man, it, it it's not this. It's everything that's happened before this. Yeah. And then it made me look at myself and say, man, I've been carrying a load my yeah. whole life. Yeah. And then it made me sit back and look at the inner city community. And I said, yo, most of us out here got PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I looked around and said, Bro, you take a you take a a, a a dude that's went to Afghanistan, Iraq, mm -hmm. anywhere in the Middle East, mm -hmm. a veteran, Vietnam, anywhere. You take a dude that has seen, they come back from their war and seen one person die. And they they rock. Gone. Yeah. Cause humans, we're not supposed to go through that over and over and over again. Yeah. So they rock. They gotta go to counselors, they gotta go to all of that. They have a nightmares, everything. Yeah. First time I saw a dead body, I was seven years old. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to think about, it's kids in our community that they're growing up every day. Just think about the little dude that's that's 10 years old. He outside playing on the front. Somebody come up, shoot his uncle, kill him dead. He, he, he looking at his uncle on the ground, brains everywhere. He crying. His mama come up, take him in the house, stop crying. You got to be tough. 
She not saying that because you got to be tough because you a boy. She's saying that because she know this is finna happen to you so many more times. If you don't learn how to deal with it now, it's going to break you. Yeah. Mm. But what he does is he internalizes it. The hurt turns to anger. The anger turns to rage. He started killing people. But he got PTSD the whole time because he's mm. never learned how to deal with his emotions. So now he don't feel nothing. You know what I mean? So it made me look at the big picture. Then, and I said, I'm going to work on a documentary about this. You got to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so then I kind of pushed it to the back burner. And I was like, oh, I can't. at first I was going to do a book. I was like, I'm going to write a book. Then I'm like, nah, books. Everybody don't read books. I'm like, yo, I'm going to work on a documentary. Mm -hmm. And so I pushed it to the back burner for a couple years. And then when everything else started unraveling in my life, all of the stuff I was dealing with, I'm constantly like, yo, I'm dealing with a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, duh, bro, look, you, you, you too. Mm -hmm. And so it made me re it made me jump up again and say, I'm doing a documentary about this. But mm -hmm. how are so, you how are you doing now? Because I mean you said Right you now I'm doing I, I'm going back. I'm going, I'm really you, I'm take you, that's why I said I'll take you to the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So another thing it made me, you know, like right now, I'm doing ten times better. Okay. Good. So, Good. I, and it's the thing, and I ain't trying to write it off. Like, I'm Superman, but at my worst point, I'm better than people. At yeah. they, some people at yeah, their yeah, best yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get that. Yeah. At my at my bottom, my bottom is better than some people's. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm I'm wired different. Like I'm I'm wired. I'm I'm that little dude. Mm -hmm. I, I'm wired different. It, mm -hmm. it does a good and a bad in you. You know what I mean? But another thing that it made me trip off of, bro, was like. Bro, I had gained so much weight. Really? Mm. Like, dog, I was like, Shh. bro, I looked at myself last year, like last year at the end of the year, mm -hmm. November, December. And I was like, dang. I'm like, bro, like my, my shirt size is like steady going up. I'm like, bro, like I'm. I've always been cool. Like I'm just gonna be 100. Like I don't know. Like I don't. I, like I'm just being. I, I don't like. I I told my friend this before. He was trying to get me to do a song, and it was about being an outcast. I said I can't do it. And he said why? I said because I I've never known that feeling. <laughs> I've never been an outcast. I've never known what it's like to be a reject. Yeah. Like that's why I tell people we need dudes like Marty now. Yeah. That Marty embodies that. Yeah. Even as cool as he is. He embodies that misfit culture. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. He talked their language. He been through what they been through. We need him because mm -hmm. I can't talk to them. Mm -hmm. I can talk to them in general, but not on a relatable point. Yeah. So I, when I was getting fatter and fatter and fatter, I wasn't never the person that was sitting up like, "Don't nobody like me. I'm fat." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that was never my thing. I'm just yeah. getting big. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm still cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it when all of this stuff started happening, I'm like, yo. Dog, I just got stupid fat. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then it made me examine that aspect. Yeah. And that was one of the things that honestly started helping me get 10 times better. Really? When I started working out. Oh, mm. wow. Like I started working out, bro, it changed my whole energy. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, it yeah. changed my whole energy about life. That's, that's good. Like enough. I started working out, but then, <laughs> and, and, and then it made me look at, you know, when we look at the church, like a flame, flame always say we, we got our little pet our little pet sins that, mm -hmm. that's cool. We dress that mug up, right. bring it around, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Like, but when I look at the church, like and I was talking to somebody about this. We was talking about a pastor and sin and, and all this different stuff. And I was like, bro, if we really took that serious, just being one hundred, like, and I don't got nobody in mind thinking this. Just y'all know I would say their name, so don't y'all go lie on me again. <laughs> If if we really took that serious, we wouldn't have no fat pastors. Because mm. mm. the Bible point out gluttony is a sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's living in continual sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like gluttony is the one thing that we look at in the church and we have no regard for. Yeah. But not even, in, I, I, and I'm going to be 100 with y'all. That wasn't my first thought about losing weight. It happened in there when I, when I sat down and thought about different stuff. My first thought was, in the African American community, I had to think about why was it so easy for me to ignore my health for so long? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
in the African American community, we disregard our health altogether. Yeah. There's nowhere to you go know? to get good food. Yeah. yeah. My boy E, you know, he 30, like, he was, this was one of the things that kicked it in for me. He 30 some years old. He died of a heart attack. Mm. He was going to work out at that time, but it's like, it had already got so bad. You mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, why do we totally disregard that? My granny, my granny died, you know, 55, 60 years old, uh-huh. you know, because she didn't, her health failed. Yeah. You know, people around us all day long, we have no regard for our health. And so I, I like, and this is some honestly that God had been convicting me on wow. mm-hmm. for years. Mm-hmm. I just, I was cool. I just kept going. I'm on the road. I'm making money. I'm cool. I'm like, I'm just going. But if I'm gonna go into if I'm gonna go into this community, one of the things that I'm working on right now, I just put a post up the other day, and I was like, man, I'm finna, I'm finna do a meeting. I'm gonna call all OGs, like gang members, from every hood in St. Louis. I'm gonna call dudes that I personally know. I'm gonna have them put the word out to other cats. I'm gonna post post up. I'm gonna sponsor post. I'm gonna do all of that when I get ready to do it, and I'm gonna have this meeting, and I'm gonna talk to all different dudes from different parts of the city about stuff we need to do with going into our community to to rebuild our community, you know, Mm -hmm. and our lives so we can be here for our children. But one of the main things I'm going to talk about is health. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't be dying at 50 years old, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's a good thing that came out of it. The the documentary, uh, me personally committing to, like, I got people. So I got people. Like, don't think, all this time this was going on, don't think I didn't have people. Mm-hmm. So I got people that I constantly get vent to, constantly. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Over and over. I, I got wise counsel, like, around me everywhere. So I, I ain't just sitting in the room like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got I got people, like, everywhere around me, you know? And, uh, but I want to, like, with the documentary and, even, and those things conjoined, like, I want to be able to create something where dudes can get counseling. That's good. Mm-hmm. And I know a few places in St. Louis right now that are committed to doing counseling for free. That's, That's good. good. So That's really so good. these are good things that came out of it. And then one of the, the last things that came out of it that's good is, man, I, I'm 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 done playing with my music. Like, I'm I'm just unapologetically me. Yeah. You like it, you like it, you don't, you don't. Yeah. That's good. Like I'm I'm not finna I'm not finna waste and I ain't gonna say it waste because you you still get fruit from it, but I'm not finna I'm not gonna put so much of my energy into something that's constantly trying to reject me. Yeah. When the whole time, and a lot of times I'm, I'm like, and I'm just being honest. Like you, when you look, if I go do schools at juvenile centers, mm-hmm. where the, where to look? Like I just did, I did every juvenile center in St. Louis over mm-hmm. the holidays for Christmas. Wow. Mm-hmm. But when you go do schools at juvenile centers, you ain't you ain't getting them checks. No. No. You're like not. you get from the church. Yeah. yeah. But the reward that I feel when I do it, yeah, it's a hundred times. Oh yeah, better. absolutely, hundred times. Absolutely. I love, I love rapping at church. Yeah, like I love rapping, and well, I want, I love rapping in front of Christians. Yeah, I'm gonna say that. Mm-hmm. I love rapping in front of Christians all the time. Like I have no issue with that because I, I need that strength from them. I need to encourage them. I, you know, we a body. That's how it works. Yeah, but when I go. I went to a juvenile center over the holiday. There was a kid in there, he's 17 now. He's locked up for murder. He's been there since he's 15. Like, we in there, and the, the chaplain come to me. He like, man, I wish you could meet this one kid. Ooh, like, you know, you got the different kids that get into more trouble in there. He like, man, I wish you could meet. They probably not going to let him come down. You know, we sit there. I'm like, dang, man, if he can't come. I'm like, can y'all take me back there at least where I can one on one, you know what I'm saying? Talk mm-hmm. to him and you know he like we'll see. So when the kids come out, it's only eight of them in there. I'm happy about that at this particular one. It's only eight. So I'm like, that don't mean they ain't doing crime, but I'm like, I'm just I'm happy they ain't in jail right now. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So because I didn't came in there before and it had been ten year olds in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm, I'm just happy it's it's eight of them. So they come in. You see what I'm saying by that too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's eight of them. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I didn't, I didn't been on stages where it's seventy five hundred people. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you going to rap for eight people that don't got no money to buy merch. They can't go on Spotify 
and, and download your record. Like, none of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ain't, ain't none of that happening. Matter of fact, I gave them free CDs. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? There's, there's no monetary gain from this. You know? So I go in there. They bring the kids in. And it, it, it's one chair empty. So I'm thinking the kid not there. You know? So I'm, I'm rapping. I'm rapping like I'm in front of a crowd of people. 7,500. Yeah. I'm sharing my story. And I get the rapping. And it's one kid. He just... He catching on to the words by the end. He's singing and he, I'm talking. He lit, like one kid, like he the only one. All the rest of them, they like. But the, these kids in this juvenile, they hood. These the hood kids. Mm-hmm. Like this, this the city juvenile. <laughs> so this ain't like county juvenile where they in there with their street clothes on. Yeah. These like hood kids. So they like, they vibing with me. They like, you see the little smile cracks. But they in an environment where it's like, I can't show too much excitement because yeah. this is a, that's a form of weakness. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I get to look at too hype in her. When I go back in the back, somebody going to be like, you just not doing all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they like, they vibe. But this kid, he like, he everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So we get done. And I'm like, man, y'all can ask some questions if y'all want to. You know, he the first one to put his hand up. He asked a question, put his hand down, put his hand up, ask another one, put his hand up, ask another one. We get done, I pray, they leave. The chaplain come and say, that's the kid I was talking about. Oh, wow. Oh. He said he never connects with nobody like that. Wow. He said, I've never seen him act like that before. He said, that's the kid we were talking about. That's what it's all about, man. Wow. And that's where my energy got to be that's from it. now on. That's it. Like, any, you want to bring me somewhere, I'm coming. Book me. You don't, I don't care. Because now it's the time for me to do what I said I've always known true. Mm-hmm. Like God creates a table in the presence of my enemies. Yeah. So if this is my table, if this is where my heart is, and I want to do this, like that's another good thing came from it. That's My plan is to create a school and juvenile center tour okay. mm. where I get funding. That's good. And I could go in, and I ain't worried about these kids buying no records, no CD, but I get funding from people that, whether it's corporations or whatever, people that say, I want to do this, but I don't have time. Yeah. yeah. And we trust you to do it. Here. Yeah. 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 You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Because I don't have time. I don't have time to play <clears throat> with the politics of Christian music and try to see if I can make another song like this so they can bring me to this uh, festival or this tour or this, yeah. this. Like, I don't have time for that. Yeah. I don't have time to play them politics for you to put me in a room in, a front, in front of a bunch of eight-year-olds. Yeah. I don't have time for that. Like, that ain't my thing. Somebody else, that's their thing, they can have it. That's cool. I'm cool with that. But I don't have time. So those are the good things that came out of it. Wow, well, the good amazing. thing is you know you got us, man, For because, I mean, that's what we're all about. Yeah. So, yeah. so you ain't got to worry about trying to do nothing for anybody else. Like, we're building this. It's, it's slow, but yeah. we're going yeah. to make it happen. Slow yeah. and steady make the you know ship <laughs> strong. Yeah. But we're yeah. we going to make it happen. I, I don't yeah. got no fears about failing. You should. Mm-hmm. Not, not slow one. Slow and steady make the ship strong. Not man. one. So... Now, I appreciate you sharing all this with yeah, us. Yeah, we do. Man, I told yeah, y'all. Right. I was gonna y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. That means a lot to Y'all know yeah. I always do Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I don't do interviews with everybody, because they like people don't know how to properly do stuff. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. I like that about y'all from the jump. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I told you, as soon as I got over the, the Thizzle verse thing, yeah. I'm like, let me yeah. really Cause, Because this. this is our third interview with you. That first one, we were just trying to explain to you why we do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. The second was, one, that was me. Right. The second was one me. was the epic one in front of the kitty <laughs> yeah. art on yeah. the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro, yeah. I, I had, I, when we did that second one, I had uh, one of my friends, Brian Broderson. Yeah. He's the uh, lead pastor over uh, Calvary Chapels. Mm. Like, and so they're up. 2,000, 2,500 pastors yeah. that are a part of that organization. And he's like the the like the the dude that is over the whole thing, right? Yeah. He took the link and said, Pastors, wow, watch this. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. Like it was, it was it, and, and I and honestly, I just like I'm the type of person that's all like if you sit people that know me, if you sit down with me mm-hmm. in a room. If you sit down with me at Starbucks and I got time, we'll I, we'll talk like this. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't I ain't, I ain't, I don't come to interviews to think through and be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, okay, yeah. I can't say that because <laughs> yeah. and, uh, it, it's man. Th- I'm telling you, this has brought me a level of freedom. Mm-hmm. That's good. That That's even good. more freedom. Mm-hmm. Like I'm gonna tell you, like, I'm just gonna be honest. I'm gonna tell you something else. So, I smoke cigars. Okay. Right. <laughs> 
I smoke cigars. It's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> one of my favorite pastimes. Yeah. Is smoking cigars. You and Steph Curry. But so long. <laughs> See how they got on him? You know where I'm going now, right? Now, before that, they like, Steph Curry, praise the Lord. He got <laughs> Philippians 4, 16 on his shoe. Yeah, brother, go. He loves his wife. That boy popped up with that cigar. They like, no, nah, this is not this not Christian. You're, you're, he's, he's not really saved. He cursed on the on the feet, on yeah, the court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he mount. They, oh, yeah, he done. Yeah. That's, I hate that. Yeah. I'm telling you, y'all don't have to kick me out. <laughs> you don't have to kick me out. Like I'm, I'm, I'm here enough with you that if you want to kick me out, I'm still gonna be doing what I'm doing. <laughs> I love yeah. you, but I have a home. Yeah, and I have a group of people that love me, yeah. that support yeah. me. I, I, and now we talk about fans. Yeah, quote unquote fans, family, whatever you want to call it, supporters. Like I know there's people out there that love what I do because mm -hmm. numbers don't lie. Yeah, people love what I do. Yeah, I, I put out an EP this year and and no videos. And I looked at my Spotify numbers, and it, it said 300,000 people listened to it. That's amazing, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. But I ain't even put out a video. Yeah. And I put out seven songs. So people love what I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never knocked that. Mm -hmm. But I, you're not going to pigeonhole me and make me a slave to that. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so yeah, like yeah. like I said, with the cigars, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I be still smoking cigar. Like, now, now I'm still wise enough to know I, I'm not going to flash everything around in people's right. face. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But- a dude came on my a dude came on my post and said, "This because the first time I posted a cigar, I'm like I'm just experiencing these levels of freedom." <laughs> <laughs> so I had a I, I, I had a post a picture from the cigar boy. I go hang out with my old head white dude, my dog. He called himself my pops. You know what I'm saying? White dude, this is my guy. Like we this is what we do. We hang out on Thursday nights. And we smoke cigars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he talked to me about business. He owns an architectural firm. You know what I'm saying? We we chop it up about life, everything. So we got a picture. I take the picture and I said, you know what? Bam, posted that mug. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like one, I'm grown. Yeah, that's yeah, one. yeah, yeah, that's one thing. <laughs> that's first of all. Yeah, I'm a grown man. Yeah. <laughs> two, this is not a sin. Yeah, <laughs> that's two. That's two. This is not a sin. Three, I need to take away. Some of the power you feel like yeah. you have over me. If you yeah. don't do it, just go ahead over and do my it. Life. Life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm sitting there doing something I enjoy. One of my favorite pastors in the world and authors, Joe Thorne mm. from uh, Tennessee. Mm. Go look at his Instagram. Every day he posts a picture of him smoking a cigar. Yeah, and every day. I I, I grew up in in more white church. Yeah, they don't have as many hangups about that. None of it. <laughs> in their None of church. As None of it. They yeah. do about us, and we do about each other. Now, let me tell you what's funny about that, too. So a dude came on my post when I posted the cigar, and he said, aren't you worried about affecting your Christian witness and how people will receive the gospel from you? I said, have you ever heard of Charles Spurgeon? Charles Spurgeon is considered the prince of preachers. Mm -hmm. He is... He he had a church in England, and they said if his church would have shut down, it would have affected. If he would have moved his church and the people that were members of it, it would have affected the entire place he was from. Mm -hmm. mm. Everything, the economy, everything. He's LeBron. You could lock the doors of his church and have everybody in there that you needed. The Prince of Preachers. One of the dopest theologians in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. And he publicly talked about smoking cigars and pipes and did it publicly. Mm -hmm. But you you worried about me <laughs> messing up my witness for the gospel. Mm -hmm. When the dude that your pastor didn't learn from yeah. and is quoting used to do the same thing. Because mm -hmm. the people in the world don't care about that. Yeah. Like, they don't care about all the stuff we think they care about. Yeah, yeah. Like, they don't care about me smoking cigars. I meet a lot of people there. Yeah. They don't care about that. My 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 mentor, the dude I'm talking about killing, he like my pops. He take me around the whole joint. This is my son, Dizzle. He, he's the number one rapper in St. Louis. And last week we was in there, he said, ask him what his name means. 
And I bust out the laughing because he's just he's funny, but mm-hmm. he be serious. And he was like, his name comes from the Bible. It's this house I shall live. At the cigar bar. You know what I mean? Have hey. you heard have you heard of Blue Like Jazz? Dan Miller, I think his name is. I heard Blue Like Jazz. You should read that, because it's talking about what you're talking about. And the freedom. I, you, I'm going to read it. You need to reference But that's that. where I'm at right now. You need to reference yeah. that. All that's of, a good place. All of that stuff yeah. brought me to a place of freedom. Yeah. Like, and, Bro, I'm telling you, I, I sat back today driving, and I said, I haven't regretted a lot of things in life. Yeah. A, I, like, I always understood life made me, you know, who I am. Everything I've been through. I, like, God allows everything to happen, like, Everything I go through, I feel like God allowed it to happen for me to help other people. Mm-hmm. It helps me, then it helps them. You know what I mean? And, and it's because he's put a certain thing in me that it won't completely break me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But today I was riding and I literally said, I think I finally have a regret. Mm-hmm. And that regret is that I spent so much of my life worried about worried about my freedom Mm -hmm. taking away my freedom while attempting to set people free Mm -hmm. when I could have done so much more for them yeah Mm -hmm. and living so much of my life unhealthy Mm -hmm. that's it and so the rest of my days that the Lord allowed me on this earth those are the two things that I'm going to Keep in mind, there's mm. get up and work out, eat right. I haven't ate meat since April. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah I'm a pescatarian. Me, I don't eat meat too. no more. I eat fish. Me I too. eat seafood. Me too. Yeah. I, I've lost since March. I went to Israel in March. Since March, I've lost 66 pounds. Wow. 15% body fat. Wow. I've lost uh, six inches off my waist. Wow. And I went down three shirt sizes. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. Just from coming out, meat. Cutting out meat and exercising. That's but crazy. I changed the whole way I eat. Like, I was a donut junkie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I hadn't had a donut since March until, like, a couple weeks ago. I ate a donut. March is your birthday? Yeah. Like, I went to, yeah. And I'm like, I, did, I just couldn't do it no more, man. And, and so that's my that's my thing now. I'm like, that's why I post the videos on Instagram of me mm-hmm. working out. That's why I do it in my story. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. People been hitting me up, man, like dude after dude after dude, girl after girl. Like, bro, I, I, I you you motivate me. I'm, I'm finna get my life together. Mm. You know, so that's why I say I, God allows stuff to happen. Yeah. yeah, you know, and he get glory from it when it happens. So, well, keep us up to date, man. Come back anytime and just Y'all let us know. How know. Journey. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. some new joints too. I'm be okay. I'm, oh, when I get home, I'm, a, uh, I'm I'm finna. Yes, yeah, I'm finna. Uh, I want to see the video. I want to hear some music. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I played the joint for Lecrae. If I don't trust Lecrae with nothing, which I trust him with a lot, don't y'all go out there? And, <laughs> don't gonna, y'all go out there? We gonna cut and, uh, that part right there. You heard me? <laughs> that's that's the. Don't put it at the beginning. Hey, I was finna say something, but I I said nope. I ain't gonna say. Because I was gonna say somebody would have did that. That would have been the clip. Like, yeah, I don't trust Lecrae with nothing. <laughs> and then you go watch the whole thing. It's like that ain't what he meant. <laughs> so I trust Lecrae with a lot. Obviously, that's my friend. But I, I, if I don't trust him with nothing else, I trust Lecrae with with music. Like, yeah, yeah. anybody you can argue a lot of things about Lecrae, but Lecrae puts together very yes. polished album. Yes, oh, yes. And, and he yeah. he knows. Uh, and, and the people around him, like he, I think his strongest suit uh, has been like relying on a team of people and having strong people around him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. but he knows songs, and so yeah. I, I played a song for. Him. So I, I had a song that I was gonna put out. Mm-hmm. I had a song I was gonna put out, and I was like, and and I had a couple other people listen to it, and they didn't get the same reaction I had. Mm-hmm. But I like wrote them off. I'm like, man, I don't know what they're talking about. I'm putting <laughs> yeah, this song yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I played it for the. It's still a good song, but I played it for the Cray yesterday. So I didn't play the song I was putting out first. You know, you work your way up there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. So I started. We in the studio. I'm playing records, and I'm like, so I played this random song that I love. That it got this whole vibe, and where I'm where I'm talking, like I'm talking to the community. You know what I'm saying about. Mm-hmm. Saving money and, and like putting money up, but it's over a ratchet trap beat. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like super ratchet, but it's like all like motivational knowledge. Yeah. And so I play that first. As soon as it come on, he like, oh, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> 
And so the soul keep going. And he like, oh, he like. <laughs> this the one. Right. And so I'm like, no, it's not. And so I'm like, no, just chill in my head. Like, I'm going to play the one for you. And so I build it up. I play this other record. Soon as that would come on, he like. <laughs> but these are the two, these are the two newest songs that I've made from yeah. my new space. Yeah. yeah. The two I played first. He like, boy, you need to put that line. So again, it's few people I listen to when it comes yeah, to this. Yeah. yeah. He like, you need to take that line and put it on uh the hook and let that be the hook. And so I'm sitting there like, I'm gonna do this, you know it. Yeah. And uh and so then I play the song that I'm about to put out. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, that mug, it's, it, I like that. It, it, yeah, it's cool. It remind me of, uh, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> and I'm looking like, no, no, this is the one. This is the one, Lecrae, whether you like it or not. So now, of course, the one may have changed. Yeah. And I'm going to get a new one. The, the, the beauty for me is I hadn't got it mixed yet. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But it, it, it also made me... I also looked at it a whole nother way too. The song that I was gonna put out yeah. was a song that I already had from like from your old seven like seven months yeah. ago. Okay. Both of the songs he went nuts over. Mm. All three. I played four records. All three that he went nuts over, I just recorded. Wow. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so I was like, I, I said to myself, like, I may need to just yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. scrap that mug. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? God got you mm-hmm. in a new place. Yeah, it's a, I'm in a new place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And I, I even in my own life, I, I woke up yesterday listening to music. I was like, man, a lot of this has affected a lot of that stuff affect your life. Yeah. I ain't I ain't even listening to certain music I used to listen to. Mm-hmm. Like I don't like like I like I, I wanna hear certain stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's it's a new day, man. Like I, I I still I'm working through some stuff, you know. I yeah. got some stuff going on. I'm working through some stuff, but at the end of the day, I'm I'm, bruh. Where I was at in December yeah. last year, yeah. I see it, man. Hundred times better. Mm. I see it, hundred. Man. You got joy in you. I can tell. Man, I can tell. A, free, yeah. a freedom where it's like, yeah. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> but yeah, I do yeah. care. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I care. Yeah, but I don't care. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like I'm in a good place, man. That's, That's why I want to acknowledge y'all. Yo, th- th- uh, Thizzle in the building. Thank you for joining us, man. In the field with the tracks, though. Yeah, you got it. You in the field. Let's go.